Well, hello everyone. Today we're going to look at a an old chip. It's a one of eight multiplexer or line selector, data line selector. Uh, this chip is the 74151. And you can see this one's made by Texas Instruments. And above the Texas Instruments logo there is a date code 7317. And that means this chip was made in the 17th week of 1973. So somewhere between the 22nd and the 28th of April 1973, this chip was made. And I don't think it's ever been used. It's been floating around in my junk box for years. And I was just looking around in there the other day and came across it and wondered to myself if this thing works. So uh, today we're going to uh, fire it up and uh, actually see if it works. So this is just a brief introduction to the theory of operation of this chip. It's an eight input multiplexer. So what that means is it has eight individual inputs and we can select which of these inputs we want to go to a single output. So from the pinout diagram, uh, we have our power pins, pin 8 and pin 16. Pin 16 goes to 5 volts. Um, our inputs are pins 4 to 1 and pins 15 to 12. And these correspond to input 0 to input 3 and input 4 to input 7, respectively. Our output is pin 5. The inversion of our pin 5 output is pin 6. And we select which input we want to connect to the output through pins 11 through to 9 and these are our selection pins S0, S1, S2. So you can see here this is just demonstrating how we can select a pin, uh, select an input and connect it to the output. So our selection pins are on the left and these are binary represent a binary number from 0 to 7. S0 is our least significant bit, S2 our most significant bit. Uh, you can see our inputs along the top and our outputs at the bottom. So pin 5 again is the output which reflects the state of the input we've selected and bar Z is the opposite of that. So you can see in this example We've selected input 0 from the selection pins on the left. The state of input 0 is 1 or high, which means the output also goes to high to reflect that state. Another example here, we've gone to the opposite end. Uh, 111 in binary is 7, so in this case we've selected input 7. The value on input 7 is 0 volts or 0, and so that's reflected in the output. All right, for the moment of truth, let's see if this chip works after sitting in drawers and boxes for the last 50 years. So just to give you a quick overview of what I've done here, of course, here is our chip. And uh, what I have here is the output on, uh, what have we got, pin five, which is the non-inverting input, uh, non-inverting output, that goes to this green LED and is connected to ground through this 1K resistor. I have a 5 volt rail on the red side here, so that all these pins close to the red bar here and close to the red bar here are sitting at 5 volts. And uh, all of these pins, all these little sockets here connected or adjacent to the blue bar, top and bottom, they're all connected to 0 volts. So our inputs here we have I0 on pin 4, I1, I2, I3, and we have the other inputs up here. Pin 16 is 5 volts, and we have uh, ground on pin 8 here. I haven't mentioned this pin here. This is an enable pin. This is uh, pin 7. In order for this chip to operate, we need to tie this to 0 volts, which is what we've done here. So the inputs, uh, I0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we have these alternating between 5 volts and 0 volts. So you can see I0 here is connected to 5 volts, I1, 0 volts, I2, 
5 volts, etc. So they're all alternating. On this side, we have our inputs to the selection pins. Um, <clears throat> so we're using the three rightmost switches here to simulate the binary S0, S1, S2. And so these are hooked up to the corresponding pins here. All right, so as you can see, I0 here is tied to five volts. These three switches are down, which represents zero. So when we switch this on, if this is working, we should see this LED come on because we've selected input zero. Input zero is five volts. And so the out output should be a high five volts and this LED should switch on. So without any more bluster, let's do it. And there we go. So we can see we've got zero volts, uh, sorry, we've got uh, input zero selected. Input zero is five volts, the LED is on. So it, this isn't definitive proof that it works because obviously the output could be shorted high or something like that. So let's select the next input. So the next input is input one, which is zero volts. And so to select that, let's place this one to high. There we go. Now we can see we've selected input one and input one is connected to zero. And we can do this all the way through, which I'll do now. So that's input one, input two, it's connected to five volts, input three, it's connected to zero volts, input four, Input four is connected to five volts. Input five should go to zero, all going well. Input six in binary, four, five, six is going to high. And our final input, input seven, should be zero. And there we have it. So as a final test, uh, I've connected a second LED to the circuit. You can see that this second LED is connected to pin six. So pin six is the inverted output. Uh, pin five is the um, non-inverted output. So basically pin five will reflect exactly what is on the input that we've selected. And pin six will be the inversion of that. So we can see we've selected input zero. Input zero is five volts. So our normal or non-inverted output shows us exactly what's on the input, which is five volts or high. And the inverted output is the opposite of that, which is a low or a zero. So if we, uh, if we select the next input, input one, we can see input one is zero volts. So now we've selected input input one, input one is zero volts. So we can see our output here, non-inverted output reflects the input, which is zero volts or low. And the inverted output is the opposite of that, which is a high. So there you have it. After 50 years of sitting around doing nothing, uh, this chip fired up uh, first time, no problems at all. Uh, I'm sure there are many different factors that may have otherwise adversely affected its uh, performance or its reliability. Uh, maybe the number of times it had been that had power cycled or temperature variation, that sort of thing. Um, so if you have any suggestions on what other factors may affect the lifespan of these chips, uh, please let me know.